Hey everyone, this is Pete, and today I wanted to take a look at Heatseeker, a rather strange C64 game coming soon to Evercade as part of the Thalamus Collection 1 cartridge. Full disclosure for those unaware, I'm an employee of Blaze, makers of the Evercade, which is why I've got an early copy of this cartridge. This is not an official Blaze video though, and my bosses are fine with me making it. Heatseeker was a 1990 release by Thalamus, developed by Paul O'Malley and featuring music by Mark Clements. O'Malley's other work on C64 included the multi-screen platformer Eric, which some regard as the prequel to Heatseeker, and the 3D tunnel shooter Dominion. Other work from Clements, meanwhile, can be heard in John Ferrari's Summer Camp and Winter Camp, also published by Thalamus. He also programmed the C64 version of Codemasters and the Oliver Twins Jet Bike Simulator and Championship Jet Ski Simulator, which are absolutely definitely not the exact same game. Heatseeker is a rather odd game in which you play a robotic leg carrying a basketball shaped heat probe and must collect heat from flames in each level which is then used to bloom three flowers essential to an alien race's survival. As you might expect from such a peculiar game its critical reception was somewhat mixed on its original release. The UK's Games Machine magazine noted that Heatseeker is a very relaxed laid-back game and this is not the sort of thing today's sophisticated action crazy public wants to play rating it 56%. Zap64, meanwhile, liked it a lot better, giving it a score of 75% and describing it as a weird but slickly executed sequel to Eric, weighed down by false complexity masking the simple gameplay. Reviewer Robin Hogg admitted to finding the game so bewildering that he had to phone up Paul O'Malley multiple times to figure out exactly what on earth he was supposed to do. But after getting to grips with the game he concluded that it was original, demanding enough and the element of exploration makes it worth persisting with. Community reviews are likewise mixed. Comments on popular C64 community site Lemon64 run the gamut from one user saying only once in my C64 devoted life have I had cause to play a Thalamus game and be totally bemused and plain insulted by what was dished up. This is the game responsible. While another noted it's a piece of art. If you don't get it, forget it. And another still praised its unashamed eccentricity. I'll do my best to teach you how to get to grips with this game today, so far as I understand it anyway. So let's go play Heatseeker. Okay, here we are with Thalamus Collection 1 for the Evercade, and today we're taking a look at Heatseeker, which is probably the strangest game on this collection, and one that I suspect a few people may well bounce off um, when they first try it. Uh, but... Um, over the course of putting together the manual for this game and the digital content for it, I discovered that it's it's an interesting game that is worth spending a bit of time getting to know. Um, like some of Thalamus's other games, there's a bit of a learning curve there, but it's rewarding. And it's a game that's fun to talk about as well, just because it's so strange. So, let's look at the description. The Trifilos of Nem. Three mysterious and magical plants hold in their lifeblood the entire race memory and psychic heritage of the people of Tantris. Your aim is to make them bloom again by draining as much heat as possible from the eight zeal flames on each level. To do this, you'll need to pilot the leg into areas devastated by pollution. Launch the leg's probe, known as the ball, and allow it to absorb as much heat as possible from the flames, then return it to the leg for pass points. To proceed to the next level, drain all the flames, earn 9999 pass points, then hold L1 and R1 to teleport. Okay. Um, these controls might look a bit complicated, but it's actually, as the reviews at the time stated, it's not as complicated as it might initially appear to be. So, let's begin. So, you are the leg, and you control the leg by moving it around, and it's sort of perpetually hopping, as you can see. So you have to sort of take that into account while you're moving around. You can pull down, and if you pull down, you can slide along the floor like this, and you can also push up to make big jumps. So, as noted before, our aim on each stage is to seek out the zeal flames and drain their heat with the ball. So here's one. So to drain the heat from a flame, we hold down. What do we do? No, we, we, we press. 
There we go. Up and fire. Or up and B on the evocate. To control the ball. And you then have to move the ball independently of the leg until it drains all of the energy from the flame and then direct the ball back to the leg and you'll see your score and the pass points will count up as the ball passes the heat energy back to the leg and that's that's the most important thing you need to learn about a heat seeker that is sort of probably the most important mechanic That there is a smart bomb, I believe. Yes, because it now says bomb in the lower right hand corner. So if I press the A button on Evercade, I can immediately eliminate everything on the screen. You can also kick the ball at enemies like that. And that, that gives you some pass points as well. And in fact, to clear each level, as well as draining, draining the flames, you will need to destroy a few creatures as well to get enough points to proceed. There's another flame. So let's release the ball again. And again, bounce that over here. Controlling the ball has a load of momentum and inertia, but you can sort of immediately bring it to a stop by holding the fire button. And so you, you do that to keep it under control and direct it back to its place atop the leg. And there we go. So you then continue hopping around the level, searching for more flames. And your energy level, the energy level of, of the leg, uh, you'll see is that sort of almost like a, a sort of seismograph type thing underneath where it says energy. And the more damage you take from enemies, the lower that line will go. And when that line goes off the bottom, you run out of energy. That's the end of your game. But you can get more energy back by draining the flames and retrieving energy with the ball. But the ball also has its own energy level as well. And again, if the if the ball dies, if the ball runs out of energy, then again, that's the end of your game as well. So a few things to take into account while you're playing. You'll also notice that you can jump through most stuff. And that's that's important. So like here, for example, we want to launch the ball so it goes above this platform here to get to this flame. Because the leg can't get up there. And we want to try and avoid the water droplets there because that will cool the ball off and lose some of its heat energy. And we then bounce it up, get it back onto the leg, and there we go. You see the energy graph for the leg rises again when it retrieves that heat energy from the ball. Does it all make sense? <laughs> if you're confused, there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. But don't don't write this game off as being too confusing if you don't get it straight away. Because it might sound confusing. My description might make it sound even more confusing. But it's actually not as complicated and weird as it might initially appear to be. At heart, it's a sort of semi-open structure platform game in which you're trying to hunt down the flames and collect them. That's all. And it just has a unconventional and weird movement system. Right, to get down this little passage here, we need to use the sliding movement. So 
So if we slide through here, we can actually go through this passageway. I've now coated the ball in chalk, which helps protect it against certain things, such as the um, such as the water droplets. That does wear off eventually, as you see. Okay, doing pretty well. Let's hop back down here, and that takes us back to a place we've been before. So we can just proceed through here. Be on our way. I've lost count of how many flames I've done. So the slidey move is probably most useful for precisely positioning yourself if you need to put yourself in a specific place to, for example, climb up one of these vines. Right, onwards. I love the sound effects in this game. They they're very simple and subtle. But they they really kind of evoke what they're supposed to. Like that that squelching sound that the snail makes is just wonderful. Alright, bouncy bouncy over here. Another flame to drain. In fact two more flames to drain here. So let's get this one first. Bounce back onto the ball. Retrieve that energy. So we've nearly got enough points. But like I say, to complete your level, you must not only get sufficient points, you have to drain all of the flames as well. So you have to find all of the flames. Again, coat the ball in chalk. through there. Now, I've got to be a bit careful because we're a long way from the leg. So if we bounce up just by... You can bounce up like the individual bricks on a wall is a technique that is you want to learn how to do quickly. I think this might be the last one. Now, does that give us enough points or do we need to do some killing? Yeah, not quite enough. So, bye-bye, Mr. Tortoise. And bye-bye, Mr. Tortoise. Right, we've now got 9999 points. So, I think, assuming we've drained all the flames, which I think we might have done, we should now be able to teleport. There we go. And then it's on to the next level. And then you just do the same, basically. But it's on a new map. With new enemies to deal with. Oh, 
like look at them let's get away from them i don't know this second level at all i know the first level quite well because i, I played it a lot during testing to prepare the manual and the other material for this game but uh yeah this this second level is a bit of a mystery to me it does seem all the creatures are moving a lot faster in this one so i suspect it's going to be quite a bit harder to hold on to your energy uh oh the ball has been caught by a venus flytrap and you see that's drained a lot of its energy so we need to get that back to the leg as quick as we can. Okay, let's go somewhere else. You see the ball's energy gradually replenishes over time. Every one of those little spikes on the graph is showing it getting some energy back. Ouch. There's a flame. There are eight on each level, I believe. energy for the ball there. Let's get out of here. These bees are dangerous. So that's two we've done so far. There's another Venus flytrap. Let's stay well out of the way there. Got some acid rain going at the moment. There's one thing the chalk pr protects you against. I right, don't see a flame up there. Going back to the leg, if you please. Can't quite reach up there. No. Yeah, the control scheme is probably going to be your biggest thing that you need to get to grips with when learning this game. Because the leg doesn't handle like a conventional platform game hero. You've got that constant bouncing motion. And a very specific trajectory that it moves at as well so there's obvious constraints on your movement but you can learn to work with those okay can't go any further that way how do we get over here then is the question can't quite jump high enough there can we jump up these? Nope. <laughs> we are very low on energy. I suspect this run isn't going to last much longer. Oh, we're dead. Game over. And then that then teleports you back to the first stage. You can um, practice individual levels on this game if you want to. It doesn't allow you to sort of progress if you're doing that. But you'll see on the on the screen there, you can choose practice wiring. You can use the virtual keyboard.
to say yes, for example, and you can choose whether you want to play in day or night mode. So let's say no. And then it will teleport you to the appropriate level. And you can practice it for yourself. So you don't actually earn any points while you're doing this so you can't progress off the level but you can use the practice mode to explore the level and learn it and figure out where everything is so that when you come to play it on your actual playthrough you can hopefully do a little bit better flame and back to the leg now to get out of the practice mode I think you yeah, so you press Y and R1 to get out of practice mode. And that takes you back to the title screen again. And then you can try again from the start. So let's have one more go from the beginning of this. And see if we can get anywhere. And hopefully what I've shown you gives you an idea of how to play this game because I completely appreciate it's a very strange game I completely appreciate some people are going to bounce right off this game when they try it go what on earth is going on I don't understand this I shouldn't be expected to <laughs> I shouldn't be expected to deal with this nonsense and that's fine that's fine I completely understand if you if you give this game a go and you feel that way However, I would encourage you to give it a try. Because I find something oddly likeable about this game. It's silly. It's creative. It's eccentric. It's a game with a very clear creative vision. I think is probably the most important thing to take away from this. Paul O'Malley, for whatever reason, decided he wanted to make a game about a robotic leg hopping around carrying a basketball. And so, by golly, he did. That's exactly what he did. And here, many years after that game was produced, here I am playing it and attempting to extol its virtues to, <laughs> to people on the internet. Wouldn't you know it. Okay, so the acid rain has actually put the flame out there. might have a problem here. Oh no, there we are. Just need to scroll the screen up a bit so I can actually see the, the top of the leg. Let me back on my leg.
<laughs> I can't get back on. I can't get back on the leg. No, ooh, no, nearly. Nearly. Oh. What happened there? Oh, is that what the... That might be what the teleport power is. That you see on the right hand side. Gradually charging up. I think if the, the ball was apart from the leg for too long, so it automatically teleported back to where it should be. I think. I think that's what happened. I choose to believe that's what happened. wallop some snails and grab the flame that is up here up you go mr. ball Last points for us. And then don't think there is one down here. Or was there? I can't remember. I still have the little icon of the basketball in the middle and how it's sort of rolling around in response to what you do. And the implication that you're making it white hot by plunging it into flames, which I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. If you threw a leather ball into a fire, it would get very hot. Oh, I've fallen, I've fallen, and I can't get up, except I can, because I can just bounce up these bricks. In a flagrant defiance of the usual conventions of platform games. And we'll just climb up the walls. Right, is that all of them? I haven't counted again. Just need to get some extra points from Mr. Tortoise, who is more than happy to provide me with lots of bonus points, it seems. And there we go. Teleport! Let's see if we can get anywhere on the second level. The second level is enormously difficult, by the way, because there are... I mean, there's, there's technically six levels, but it's, you, it's the same three levels twice. You do them once in the daytime and once at night time. Right. 
Let's have a look in this direction. Oh, this is where I was having trouble before, isn't it? Can you go any further that way? Doesn't look like it. Over there is the question. Oh, there is a flame up there, though. It's worth remembering. Uh oh, that's a great. Acid rain. Oh, yellow rain is bad rain. <laughs> it hurts. All right, can't quite jump off the top of the screen there. This way. Hmm. I guess we've got to send the ball off to go for a bit of a bouncy bounce. Except the ball. Come on, ball. Up you go. Come on. A little bit more. A little bit more. Oh, you can't quite reach. There we go. That's better. All right, then you go this way, and there's another flame over here. Wonderful. Running out of energy, though. Right, so if the ball runs out of energy and the teleport gauge on the right-hand side is full, it will just teleport back to the leg from the look of things which is good but the leg now has hardly any energy that's not going to help is it <laughs> I think it might all be over. <laughs> it is all over. Because the ball and the leg have both run out of energy. There we go. Anyway, that is Heatseeker. A bafflingly strange game. But uh, a rather, a rather wonderful one, I think. Like I say, it's it's a game that I encourage you to give a chance because while you may feel completely confused by it to begin with, there's some compelling gameplay to be had there, both in terms of mastering the controls of the leg and the ball and mapping out the levels and discovering things and getting a little bit further each time and getting high scores and all sorts of things. So yeah, it's it's a cool game that I really like that I, I particularly wanted to share with you from this Thalamus collection. Just just because it's it's one of Thalamus' lesser known games, but everyone knows Hunter's Moon's good, everyone knows Creatures is good. But this <laughs> divisive to say the least. Um so yeah, I thought I would attempt to provide you with a look at it in a way that will hopefully help at least some of you to appreciate it a bit more than you might otherwise have done. Anyway, we'll leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>